So I've been getting a lot of uh, questions regarding cleaning the inside of the Emerald air fryer. And uh, for the most part, it's pretty simple. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a keeping it clean and cleaning it. It's a, it's a two part uh, approach. One is the preventive maintenance uh, that I do. And I explained all that in my previous video uh, in terms of using the, um, the baking tray, uh, using the uh, drip tray and lining both of them with tin foil when, uh, whenever I use them. Uh, there's been some debate on that, but um, you know, another thing I wanted to show you was, uh, you know, this is the inside of my uh, emerald, not showing off or anything, but um, you know, for those that don't use the foil or just refuse to, to believe in it, um, you can compare yours to mine and, uh, you know, <laughs> and more importantly is the uh, cleanup time. I don't know how much time you guys are spending, but uh, for me, it's simply, uh, you know, just removing the foil from the baking tray and throwing it in the garbage putting on a new one um, so I hope that will encourage you uh, you know just again Tom Bragg but just to encourage you to uh, to give it a try there is no overheating issues I have experienced I've explained in the uh, comment section how um, you know I believe it's an issue whereby the, uh, the dripping the drip tray, if you try to line this you run the risk of the foil touching this um, this bar, and so uh, I believe that. Uh, and if you do that, you can cause a lot of problems. But um, I think rather than the company, you know, trying to tell everybody how to place the foil and explain it in writing, which is very difficult, um, it's easier just to say don't use any foil on this drip tray. Um, the idea that it can cause overheating it's um, it's an interesting one, just because the foil is really just an extension of this uh, drip tray you're putting on very very tight just like a little thin layer it's hard to imagine how that's going to cause overheating but um is what it is so uh, more importantly let's get on to the uh the cleaning um that's i told you the first approach which is the you know the the best defense uh, best offense is a good defense type of thing that that's the pans that's the foil um after i use it as soon as it's um um you know cool enough to get in here because you got to be very careful the glass itself gets very hot these parts get hot obviously the coils are burning hot sides get hot you just have to wait till it cools enough but as soon as I can I get in there with a um, this is not wet but a, a wet paper towel a warm wet paper towel not too much water if you want some abrasion and I'm usually able to get off any kind of like you know um, uh, what do you call it any kind of uh, juices or um, any kind of oil splatters any minor stuff um, and when I can't, um, I will use, a, a, you know, a, a, a moist, I would say, moist uh, sponge. Now, these sponges, I wrote about them in the comments. Uh, they have two sides to them. This is an abrasive side, but it's not metal or anything like that. Uh, and this is the softer side. Sometimes you see these uh, in a yellow color, too. And this abrasive side is usually enough to, you know, just get anything off. Now, there are times where... Um, and I've done this where, you know, I forget to clean it and it stays on there for a day or two or just something really nasty, in which case I have a special weapon. And um, this is what you guys are hopefully have been tuning in for. Um, here it is. It's these Scotch-Brite stainless steel scrubbing pads. And I'll show you what they look like. These are not Grillo pads. Um, I'll leave a link in the bottom so you can figure out exactly what they are. It comes with a ball shape, um, and these are soft. Let me show you. Like this is, I tore one apart, but it's basically soft. Um, you can crumble it up, and this does not. I mean, you might get a little bit of scratching, but it's nothing like a Brillo pad. Brillo pads, a you know, they tend to have the soap in them, so they get really, really messy. But sometimes a red color, blue color, um, and they are very abrasive. This is not very abrasive this you can use it on your um you know your special pans um i have a video where a video where i made hamburgers from chopped meat not patties it got very drippy very juicy um, i did get splattering and um, i did end up leaving it for a day or two and i had it on my walls here uh caked on nothing would come up you know my my traditional uh this didn't work paper towel didn't work the uh the sponge didn't work and um, I had to use this and I have a video of it um, cleaning it up and shows you just how well it works I mean nothing worked. I was trying to use like my nail I still couldn't get it off and um, you'll see here 
it's uh, it's all clean. Let me show you the hamburger night cleanup video so you can see um, exactly how this works, uh, see it in action, and I'll be right back with you. You can see some grease splatter right here, and even just by going like that, by using my nail, it doesn't come off very easily. And there's some up here too. And even using a um, side for some stuff like this grease doesn't do much. Put the light back on. Nothing. So that's where this comes into play. Watch this little bit here. See that? Gone. Like magic. See this bit here? Now it does help to wet it a little bit, and this is not very wet at the moment. Take a look at that now. bit that was here is now gone. Let's go for this. This is dry. I'll wet it a little bit. And it's dry. And the beauty of using this is that it doesn't not that abrasive. Look, it's gone. See that? It's clean now. And there's still more back here that I'll get. But you get the idea. Uh, but this had a lot of splatter from um, from when I made the uh, hamburgers. I mean, actually, it's a good comparison. So this is the side I cleaned. Let me put some light on. Um, you know, this is the side that was cleaned up here and, uh, and this side is still still got the remnants of the steak of the hamburger rather hamburger meat now depending upon what you're cooking uh you know a lot of times i just get away with some you know, warm water and um and a paper towel that's literally all i use that's all that's required uh, in this case you know it, it was uh <laughs> it was meat it was juicy meat and uh, obviously some of that juice from the meat uh, splattered all over. But you know, generally if you're cooking veggie burgers, even you know fried stuff, because you're just coating it, there's no oil and juices running around. Very rarely do I get any you know big splatters or hard to clean up messes. So this is the key. Um, you can keep it as a ball like this. I had torn it apart, I think, just to uh, you know get more life out of them. Um, but in hindsight, I wouldn't do that because. Um, what I noticed was I was getting fragments like this, and this is something you do have to be, you see that little thing? Um, something you do have to be careful to keep it in the ball shape and don't rip it apart like I did. Um, but just be careful if you're using something like this inside, um, you can get some metal fragments. So when you're done, uh, take a wet, a wet cloth or a wet paper towel and just, you know, go through it. Make sure there's no metal fragments. So ideally, <laughs> only use this. Um, or this, I should say, when you really can't get it off, because um, they, you know, I mean, you can see inside is almost virtually no scratching, but it use a little bit. So, not that many people care, but um, you know, again, you don't want to deal with fragments. This is kind of like the, uh, the last resort, but it does work 100%. Um, otherwise, yeah, just get in there with the paper towel and uh, and a sponge. A lot of people have asked, do not use any chemicals in there. Why? Because um, any kind of remnants of bleach or any other uh, any other chemicals, this stuff heats up. They can become volatile. They can become dangerous to your health. They can get into your food. Just avoid any kind of chemicals. Um, this this is all you need. This will do the job if you have any of that kicked on. Anyway, if you have any questions, um, you know, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you give the pad a try, please do come back and write in the comments. Let me know how well it worked. 
uh, share your experience with others. This was a, this is a big point of frustration keeping uh, keeping the emerald for a lot of people for keeping the emerald uh, clean inside, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I shared my little secret pad. Uh, just trying to help others enjoy their emerald, um, get the most out of it. Listen, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, subscribe down below, and I hope to see you soon. Thank you.